Silence! It's time! It's time! It's time for another episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Can you dig it, dig it sucker? Grab a sandwich pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. 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 Grab a sandwich pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a sandwich pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Back, sit back and get 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 uh, I'm here. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm the one with the zombie virus. Okay. I am living on borrowed time. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just extremely tired. But I'm doing a little better now. Now I get a beer. So. Ah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. And uh, also, Knuckles, man. Man, you've been going through a lot, dude. So, <laughs> how you been? <laughs> He's got he's got herpes on his hand. Well, <laughs> no, he's got the T virus. It's gonna affect people soon. No. He's gonna turn to a, a, a fly here for some reason. No, no, I I'd rather have the T virus than to have herpes. <laughs> That's I fair. think anybody would rather have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, yeah, last week uh, uh-huh. I start off with a sore throat. You can probably hear it when I was recording. Uh, after that, it turned to my Ooh. hands swollen, and like, and I had this uh, charity tournament okay. Friday, so I was try- I had to fight my way through that because my hands were swollen and it hurt to fucking uh, oh. grip the controllers. And I was like, <laughs> I played one match yeah. of Griff Ball, and I was like, oh god, it, it hurts. <laughs> The pain, <laughs> and it's like it's like, are you okay? It's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be fine. I'm just gotta get this. We have to make these games like half second matches, and it's like, oh god, no, it's terrible. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, I slept all day. Don't those <laughs> days don't exist? And I was supposed to work. Uh, well, Monday went to the doctor, find out it's Ooh. not what I thought it was. So and the doctors had no idea what, what I have. They just, they just, yeah. The doctors had no idea what I had. They gave me steroids and antibiotics. So if y'all piss me <laughs> off, I'm going to rage quit. Find, come oh, over the, to y'all's the houses and treatment. strangle you. Do so you know what that means, everybody? <laughs> no mention of John Cena yep. whatsoever. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and. uh it's like it's been two days since uh, I've fucking uh, been to the doctor. I'm on fucking steroids, antibiotics. They they haven't contacted me what without uh, oh. with what it is yet. The shit okay. has faded a little bit, and I'm um, I'm in a good mood right now. But it will change by the time we end this show. Yep, because one of these oh, fuckers no. is going to piss me off. <laughs> I like how Tyler's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna piss him off so bad. He won't it wouldn't be a normal, it wouldn't be an episode without that. It's gotta happen. Yeah, but I, I, was, I was, I was looking at your picture on Facebook. You posted of your well, earlier. I'm thinking it's like a, I'm thinking it's like a rare breed of like chlamydia. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can, you can fuck off on that. That picture though, oh, man, that that's picture terrible. I posted, and that was when my hand, was, that was before my hand got really bad. Uh, Your hand got worse than that Yeah, it picture? swelled up to about two more sizes. I was I eating thought. when he posted that picture. <laughs> let you know. <laughs> I was really upset. Ru- <laughs> ruined my turkey sandwich. Hey, I could have shown you my face. Could have shown you my ass. Could have shown you my Probably would have been hands, a little could've... better. I much would have much appreciated no. that, actually. That... No, but... Uh... <laughs> but... What else to say? That picture... I was perfectly calm. It's like it'll go away. 
if it's what I think it is, it'll go away within a couple of days. Just gotta miss a couple of days of work. And then fucking Cassie. <laughs> She was a uh, okay. host on this episode, episode nine. on the show, episode nine. Uh, she posted and said it looked like flesh eating bacteria. The motherfucker uh-huh. here that's oh. hosting this week liked that <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, that's because I kind of agreed with her. It kind of you, looked you like you did a say it was a T virus. Such basically what the flesh eating virus is. I see. I was trying. I was ma- trying to make a joke, trying to make myself feel better. Then these two, those two fuckers. Don't throw me in this bundle yet. Decide to cut. <laughs> not not you, Cassie and uh, fucking Jack here. Decides that they <laughs> want to fucking freak me the fuck out, and just we didn't mean to freak you out. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't mean to freak me out, but it's like great. Now I'm fucking nervous and I'm scared. <laughs> and uh oh. so yeah since at that point I had no idea what the fuck it was uh well you could be like Jamie that... Lannister man like with just one hand you just rock it just give like a golden right oh, hand oh yeah there was there, no there was a point where I decided to cut both my hands off give me nice robotic hands that's good like go for some oh, that'd be kind of Skywalker esque but uh, this morning though I did get a call from another possible job. I yeah. got a phone interview. Hopefully it went well. And hopefully we can get this podcast done and I can go go to sleep on a good note. Okay. Yeah, so how you been doing, Jack? Well, you know what? I've been doing quite all right. As a matter of fact, you know, I just started to begin like just started watching stuff again. It's it's just kind of weird where I go through phases and stuff where it's like, okay, I'm going to play a bunch of games, probably going to be on the internet for a while, and then it's just like, that's it, or something like that, to and from. But I actually started getting into, like, watching stuff on you Netflix. You watch Firefly? So I just tried to delve... Well, I've already watched Firefly so? on uh, Netflix. <laughs> Jinx! Oh, me soda. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, last week, I decided to watch Firefly. Went through Firefly. Yeah. Watched Serenity. Three days later, went through Firefly, yeah. except for that last episode. And then went to Serenity again. Okay. It's the last episode, the one, the one with the... Um, Holy crap, the, dude. Uh, I hate that bounty hunter. I love that so. one. You ever been raped? <laughs> <laughs> was a, oh, God. Was a, I don't remember that one. That was a really good episode. That was weird. That was creepy. Oh, it's the ones like, uh, have you ever been shot? And it's like, no. That's weird. Um, they make psychiatrists go through psyche valve, but they don't make a doctor... Have to go through surgery. And I was like, "You, you need to be shot." And I was like, "What the right. fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> that was a great episode. Every episode was great, except for the first one. First one's bad. Dude, the first one was also awesome. well, the first I one. That. The, the first one was okay and stuff like that, but it, oh, it was fucking on two episodes. It was a fucking movie. I told I know. I always, I always tell everybody by episode three you'll be hooked, and every time I've talked to episode three, they were hooked. I I like the train job. Train job is okay. I like the train job, and I like where he makes his that comeback. And like yeah, like, where he makes a comeback, and he's like he tortures a uh, Mal and Wash. Yep. Oh god, yeah, that was like, pretty good uh, too. Was where you just see Wash become badass. Mm-hmm. Like you see him, you from throughout the entire show, you see him <laughs> like as the comedian. Like comic, yep. r- like comic relief and stuff, and this, he's great at that. Alan Tudyk is fucking awesome. If you've seen uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, I believe in the wind. Yep, <laughs> I mean no Tucker and Dale versus Evil. <laughs> that that movie's fucking fantastic. Him and his friend play rednecks and go out in the woods and a bunch of college students kill each other. <laughs> but yeah, going back to Firefly. <laughs> Fucking oh yeah, it's a good show. Oh Watch yeah, it. just that's, that's a good that, series, the rampage though. episode. I like that episode that uh, Knuckles was mentioning though about uh, him, the captain, and stuff being like uh, captured and stuff like that, being tortured and, and stuff like that. You just hear them arguing Nathan... with each other as they're being tortured. Yeah, and like Nathan Fillion or something like that, just just try to keep him from going into like from, from breaking like, down, like yeah, from breaking down and stuff like that. Just talking about his wife and stuff. And like, <laughs> he, she follows every order. She didn't follow up one. What? Marrying you! <laughs> and, uh, 
Damn it, I'm going to watch Firefly now. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> But anyway, what well, I actually have since been we don't like, have uh, much to talk about, let's make this the Firefly Ser- Serenity oh cast. My God. <laughs> we've done, I think we've done it a couple times oh, already. God. We have talked about Firefly a little bit, though. But... Deserves it. You know, but, I'll li- uh, oh, real quick, one last thing about Firefly. Okay. I lit my <laughs> boss at the time. He now works with me. I got him another job. I got him a uh, job. He might become an assistant manager somewhere else. Um, right. I gave him my DVD of Fireflaw two yeah. and a half years ago. Hasn't watched it. And it's like, all right, I'm going to get you this job, but you have to fucking watch Fireflaw. He's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. He, wa- uh, he hasn't watched it yet, and I'm going to cuss him out now. <laughs> I fucking had it. Have a fucking uh, DVD. Two and a half fucking years. Fourteen fucking episodes. <laughs> I know. Was he just trying to wait for like the end of the like when of the world? Or I don't something? know. It's like, like four or fourteen forty minute fucking episodes. Well, 15, 13 really. 40 minute episodes. Yeah. And then uh, an hour and forty minute movie. It's a glorious seventeen hours Man. of film, though. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> but what I daily, what I actually like went to watch on uh, Netflix, though, I started watching a bit of Arrested Development since it's uh... like a show I've been wanting to watch for quite a while. And, uh, I just decided to watch like, the first 11 episodes and stuff. It's like, hey, some parts of this is pretty damn funny, you know? I really like Tobias. Yeah, he's the best. You know, to... <laughs> he's the best man that never knew oh, and yeah. stuff. He's all in the shower or something like that. He's all in the shower crying and somebody's inside of those like freaking short short like. It's like well, I'm the first um, therapist and anal- analysis in history. And uh, what was it? Uh, oh god. And oh god, what was it called? Like it was like spilled anal rapist. <laughs> oh god, that show's great. Like anal rapist. Yeah, he's like anal like an or... rapist. That's what it was. An anal rapist. But it was, it was like on his on his card. It said uh, Tobias, uh, whatever his last name is, and then at the bottom it says anal rapist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a business. Oh, that's great. Except for the just, I, I like the little. Just pretend season three uh, is the end, though, and just don't watch four. Okay. Because oh, well, season four is no. That season great. four has retroactively uh, destroyed the first three seasons for me. It like the uh, I love when uh, everyone was talking about that. Like they're releasing season four on Netflix. They the Netflix publishing uh, Arrested Development. And they bring it out. It's like you w- hear everyone that week just stop talking about Arrested Development. Yeah, a lot of people didn't even like. And it was like that was fine. Yeah, most people didn't yeah, even finish actually, it. Actually, I found it kind of weird how everybody was talking about it one week, and all of a sudden it's like I just didn't even need, like hear about it. Not even like the final episode. Yeah, most or people didn't even finish it. That's how bad it was. Like, I, be, wow. I remember watching it like that weekend, and like basically yeah. forced myself through it, and it was uh, just a disappointment all the way through. I don't think I enjoyed any of it. So just just pretend oh, wow. the first three seasons are it, and you'll be happy. Well, I guess there's a reason and stuff to uh, <laughs> why certain TV shows end, so they don't have to endure a crazy ass, like terrible yes. final season. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And like Supernatural, which is going on fucking five seasons too long. Yeah, I think that's I think that's like a main problem though with some of the TV shows. Like, some of the uh, anarchy like now set the seasons. Like, this is last season. Yeah, but the problem great. is, you know, on CW though, like that. Like they don't have a lot of good shows. Like they have like thirty seven like vampire versus werewolf Teenage shows. Teenage vampire dramas, yeah. And then they have and like they have Arrow yeah. and C W and uh Supernatural. That's all they got. Now they have Arrow and now they have Flash. Oh, I can't wait for Flash. Hmm. Oh yeah, Firestorm's gonna be Yeah, in it's actually field, Arrow was Arrow was great. Arrow is great. It's just neat. I haven't watched season two yet it's, and I'm kind of afraid. It's really it's really good. No. Uh the cool thing is Firestorm who uh, is being played by uh Stephen Emil is the character he plays Arrow in the TV show, and that's his brother uh, uh, in real life. Uh, he's going to play Firestone Storm. <laughs> so, yeah. Are they going to have a Let's team up? Uh, I think there's going to be some crossover. They're kind of Doctor Who it a little bit with uh, Doctor Who does that with some Doctor of the- Who and Torchwood. Yes, yes, that was yeah Torchwood. 
K9. Well, let's see. See, Other I'm not that, even a fu- I, I hate fucking Doctor Who, and I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor, Doc- <laughs> damn. Oh, what is this? Speaking of that? Doctor Who, season eight trailer. I will kill came you. Out. I will kill you all. Oh, earlier this week. I can't wait. Oh, August twenty third. Things that get me now. mad. Things that are popular culture that gets me <laughs> mad when people talk about Arrested Development, Doctor Who. Yeah. John Cena. Oh my God. Uh, Really, those three things, no mention. They need to make a, like a crossover <laughs> like with Tobias, John Cena Doctor is Who, a special and guest John Cena. Star Doctor Who when when they all go into Torchwood. Yeah, and then Tobias show It's like Tobias and John Cena go inside like the, the phone booth of Doctor <laughs> Who and stuff, travel back in time and like rough the run like ruin the worst pro rest like ruin the best pro wrestling moments or something like that. To- so like Goldberg tries to defeat like Hulk Hogan or something like that, you just see John Cena just like just No, what's gonna happen is Tobias is gonna, <laughs> gonna paint gonna himself blue there. and he's gonna hide on the side of the the, the, <laughs> the phone box. So it's gonna happen. And next <laughs> next day later, after that episode airs, you find out that all three of those actors are dead. <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay, that is I think I just, I think but, I just blew uh, myself. <laughs> but that's not all I've been watching on Netflix, though. I started getting back to watching a little bit of Soul Eater, which is like uh, an anime, which I was watching a bit on Toonami, but uh, really just stopped and stuff. Because I just want to give myself a break from it for a little bit. Watched a couple episodes last night. It wasn't so bad, but the main thing I wanted to talk about maybe like a little bit before getting into what we've been playing is uh, Attack on Titan, which I watched like the first like ten episodes of the thing. It is really, really, like, uh, mature. It's really interesting, and uh, the story is, man. Uh, oh, is that that um, episode that, is that that show that came on that's a Netflix original? No, that's a different, I don't know. No, I know what you're uh, talking about. Just, that's a different yeah, show. There's new an- yeah, there's this new anime that's uh, a Netflix original, and it keeps popping up everywhere huh, yeah. on, my, oh. on my feed. That's, is that yeah. Attack on the Titans, no, is that, is that in just, Japanese, or is it English? Well, the English like a uh, dub is uh, airing on a like tsunami oh, right okay. now, but uh, the the Japanese dub has actually been on Netflix for a little bit, and uh, you can like there is an option where you could probably listen to it like in the English like subtitles or something mm-hmm. like that, and like uh, the English voice actors. But as for me, I just whenever I like I watch an anime or something like that, normally I like to listen. Just listen to the Japanese like uh, voiceover work with the English subtitles, because, hey, why not? So, I started watching that. I started to get into their little story. This whole story is basically around uh, these three these three kids and stuff that are trying to, like, uh, protect... Well, not, not just trying to protect, but they're trying to, like, this, these, destroy these uh, big, humongous creatures that are called Titans, right? Nobody knows Do anything they about them. <laughs> Dang it! Well, they... <laughs> I was going to make that joke. Do they prepare to? Do they prepare to Titanfall? Wow, that's just bad. That is bad. Oh my god! I thought my but, joke uh, was bad. But that's just horrible. So it's like a combination yeah, of Titanfall specific... and Attack of the Clones, right? That's what this show's about. Not even okay. close. Now, it's like if you now I want the giant now I want with, like, lots of DLC and Titanfall. Like that. <laughs> no, it's like if you have like a group of like. Uh, like a, like unoblivious like village people or something like that having to fight off against these huge hordes of stuff of like Andre the Giant type of hold clones. Up, hold up, Jack. Powers. Yeah. I just realized that what? EA has rights over Star Wars. Oh my god! <laughs> Please, EA, put lightsabers in Titanfall. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be interesting. Oh, that'd I might so buy an Xbox One tomorrow. That, actually. that sounds fucking great. Just over the, Cutting Titans in half. Yeah, over the top. <laughs> uh, like, make this lightsaber a fucking anti-Titan weapon. Oh my god, dude, that would be badass. Well, anyway, let's let's just get into what we've been playing since we've been kind of uh, going on a little bit too long here. Ginger Boy, you're up first. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm very tired. I'm sorry. Uh. No, so I, uh, I I wanted to just kind of do my final thoughts on Wolfenstein this week, so I've got a little bit more into it. I'm actually on the last chapter. I just had no time to play it this okay. week. So, uh, but it's actually it's the it's the game is a like I said like it's a lot it's a lot of fun. There is nothing 
that they don't do anything to change the wheel of first person shooters. It's just it's it's almost like watching yeah. like an '80s Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, but video game form. Sounds good to me. Where, oh, speaking of '80s uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, I watched uh, Sabotage Commando. last night. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, it's like I, th- <laughs> I was like, no, it's like I just got off that Commando high. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like, you know, I want another fucking retarded Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Sabotage has a couple. He has a guy from Lost. And has a guy has fucking what's his name from Lost? Uh, Joe Mangatilia, whatever the, the guy from True Blood's in it too. Was. So <laughs> Sawyer. He has Sawyer what? from Lost really? and uh, and a couple. I, mean, I thought it was gonna be great, explosive <laughs> and all that other shit. And I was like, oh my god, it's so terrible. Just stick to Expendables, man. That's about, <laughs> about as good as we're gonna get anymore with those guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Escape Plan was okay. No, I still haven't watched that. It's it's all right, like for a bad movie, for one of those old fashioned bad like movies, but eh, it's. <laughs> uh, no, so it, it's really it's just a really fun um, game to play. Like, there's some issues technically with the game where I've had you know, like I talked about last week, where like the 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 enemy couldn't detect my you know my ai partner or um like i've had times where like i yeah. killed like a guy and like he'd fall and he'd die his you know his body be laying on the ground but his gun's still in the air you know and things of <laughs> and i had this one that really irritated me in one chapter like twice in a row i was running and mm-hmm. i just stopped and i couldn't move i couldn't jump nothing i was standing like right in the middle of a battlefield and i just got killed instantly okay. and that's that and in, in the one problem is that the checkpointing is horrible in this game. Where like so there's there's parts of, you know most of the game you you go through waves and waves of enemies, and you'll get through like you know two or yeah. three waves of enemies, and like you get you'll get a little, you'll get quite a bit farther, and it's like five ten minutes of gameplay here, and it's pretty it's actually a pretty tough game. I'm playing on normal, and it's it you know it's I'm I'm dying a lot quite a, you know for what I normally I'm not the best shooter in game uh, first person shooter in the world. But I mean, you're not emoji. Yeah, yeah. I, but I, you know, I do. I, I hold my own usually on normal. I'm dying quite a bit in this game. <laughs> I hold my own on normal. Yeah, like I do pretty. Yeah, it's, I'm not, yeah like I said, I'm not very good at it. Yeah, you guys see me play Call of Duty. Um, oh god, please don't be on this team with Call of Duty. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you do, just stay behind hey, them. Hey, if we're playing, if we're playing with... domination, I'm good. But if it's, you know, if team deathmatch, if match, you're playing true. with him, just s- s- if you're playing with him. Just watch him, like just watch over him. Let him do what he's doing, and then clean up kill. Like just let everyone shoot at him, and then right as you see bullets coming at him, you clear out the. <laughs> That's enemies. why my teams usually win because they usually just clean up my, the people that kill me. But um, oh, we need to we need to do that. We need to like organize really? a community game night and just get to playing together. Destiny Bay is yeah, the no Destiny shit. Bay is just... out this week, so it's up tomorrow. Yeah. It's up in two hours. As of this recording, yes. What two hours? As of the recording. Yes. Yeah. As of the episode release, it's been out two days. Yes. <laughs> two days ago. Dude. Oh, wait, for PS4 users. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Xbox. Uh. You know what's going to be funny <laughs> is that we could probably try the beta, like on some of us who own Xbox Ones as well, like just play both the beta on the PS4 and the Xbox I'll say that. One. I'll, That'd be kind of fun. I, I want to do that, but I don't know if I can get a code for the Xbox One since I have a code for the PS4. Just pre-order it on on three on Xbox One on Amazon like you did before, and then cancel Wait, it. Wait, aren't aren't we like given like three codes of something? Yeah, we're, we're given like three codes, but it's for the console that yeah. you pre-order. It's got to be north. It's got to be in the oh. continent that you selected it for. So either Europe or North North America. So they're it's actually pretty Damn. smart in Bungie's behalf. But um, Bungie's awesome. It's one of the world's best developers. I gotta admit that's pretty cool that they did yeah. that. Uh, but Wolfenstein, going back to it. Um, overall, yeah. I would say it's actually a really great game, and I was talking about how I didn't think this game was worth a buy, and it's. But I think I've easily put ten hours into this game, probably more. And would you um, like, ha- like on a story level, is it like a comedy? Is it like the old Wolfenstein where it's like a. Mecha Hitler at the end. Um, it's kind of weird in that uh, sense, though. Where I don't know the ending. I haven't got to the final boss yet. Is it? But like, would you describe it as a? Uh, would you describe it as more serious, like it's, more towards Metro, or 
Metro mixed with maybe some Dead Rising humor. It's it's serious, but it's almost like the story. It, it, is, it's like is 80, it too serious. It, it's almost serious for the fact where it's kind of funny, but like I don't think they're trying to be funny. It's like like an, like I said, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, movie. so like the Arnold Schwarzenegger like Commando movie. Yeah, it would basically. Is, like, I don't think they're trying to be funny, but it's just kind of how over the top it is in this game. It's kind of funny and kind of. Well, oh, that's how that's how the old Wolfenstein's were. It's like if wasn't uh, meant to be taken, it wasn't meant to be like funny. But come on, you're shooting. Me- yeah, a, Mecha you, yeah, you fight Mecha Hitler. The weird thing is actually they never say Hitler by his name. Like there's like articles you can find right. like of like you know like some of last week newspaper clippings and there are planes flying over my head right now. Okay, they're bom- It's the black. Oh my god, the he's black- getting bombed! <laughs> it's the black helicopter. The Nazis from 1960 have found me. Um, <laughs> no, oh, <laughs> we got a movie. Yeah, um, uh, the Nazis. The reason why we won is because most of them went into a, t- a black hole, <laughs> and the black hole appears now. <laughs> but um, no, so <laughs> that would be hilarious. So, um, sci-fi, sci-fi Saturday movie. Call us, people that made Sharknado. Um, no, so it's kind of crazy. Seriously, I, I can come up with this. I can come up with a script in an hour. Yeah, it'd be better than. And this will be better than half the stuff you make. Probably. Um, no, so here's actually one crazy part. Um, this is how over the top it gets. Okay. You, it's minor spoiler. You go to the moon in this game, and there's a Nazi base camp on the moon. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. These Nazis. There's is a it, Nazi base is camp it on the Moonraker? moon. <laughs> what? Uh, what's that fucking James Bond movie? Moonraker? I don't remember which one it is. That, that might be it. Oh, it was like some Moonraker. bad guy. Some guy, some Bond bad guy went to the moon as a moon base. <laughs> Sounds about right. Like the second Austin Powers movie made fun of. Yeah. Right? Those Nazis came from the moon. <laughs> the Nazis that went into the black hole? <laughs> Where's Peter Dinklage Later when you need him? <laughs> Peter Dinklage should have narrated this movie, this game. This has been awesome. Uh... No, so I don't... and now, oh my God, there's Nazis on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I, I think it's a really cool game. I would say definitely pick it up. I'm hearing people are are, are finding it now for like forty bucks now on sales online. Cool. So if you could find it for thirty, sounds... forty bucks, I'll I'll wait till it gets around twenty five. Yeah, I mean it's definitely. Uh, I agree with that. Definitely, or you can if you can find it as a rental, definitely. A pay, I mean, uh, oh, I've got a free month of GameFly. There you go. I would throw it on the list and get that because that's actually really it's, actually, it's a really really fun game. I would say it's right, much right, better. Right, I'm enjoying it much more than Watch Dogs. Real quick, oh yeah, everyone's enjoying it more. Well, than I Watch Dogs. I was like the one person in the world that like Watch Dogs. So, well, I I I, pl- I told you I think it was last week or a week before last where I said I played more of it and I'm starting to enjoy more except for the driving. Like I I liked Watch Dogs. I like the story concept of it. Except for the part where you had to save the fucking mute kid, but that's on another another Goddamn deaf kids. tangent. <laughs> no, it's traumatic kids that isn't tr- that that doesn't have a problem. They just don't want to talk to anyone but his fucking mother. Oh, you know, it was his nephew. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fucking. Uh, um, on a side note, I fixed uh, last week. I posted episode fifty four or fifty five as uh, yeah. forty five. <laughs> that that was because, like, again, when I posted the episode, that was when I was in my coma. He was typing with his herpes hands. Ooh. No, I was typing <laughs> in with my two times fucking normal size finger hands. <laughs> and uh, I was fucking out. I was on Tylenol PM and freaking Benadryl, so. <laughs> no, it's a fucking great combination when you're fucking sick. You should take that back. You should have took laxative and but... see what happens. <laughs> He's Hell just no. in the middle of his sleep. Oh! But, uh, <laughs> but I just want to say, I just want to say, I fixed it. Now we we'll continue. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Fuck y'all laxatives! Fuck you I've been I've been sober for a week. I'm kind of sad now. Oh. Okay, let's get this going. I'm sorry, Ginger buddy. Boy, what else have you been playing? Um, I like I talked about last week. I got Shovel Knight. Um. I've only got to play the first uh, two levels so far, so I'll keep it quick. Um, it's a HD 16-bit 
a super old school Super Nintendo game. <laughs> HD 16 bit. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like it, you know it's got the style of like a like a it's super HD Super Mario Brothers in 8 bit graph is 16 bit. Basically, it, well, it looks like 16 like a Super Nintendo game, but just like kind of HD. Um, it's kind of it, clear. Yeah, it's very clear, and um, it's it's very um, cutthroat, like you would play an old Super Nintendo game where. It's a pla- it's a side scroll platformer where you play as a, a knight with a shovel as a weapon, hmm. hence the name shovel knight. Um, uh, oh my god, you just blew my mind. Yep. In case you didn't get it, I know you're all hopped up on um, steroids and laxatives. Um, so no <laughs> antibiotics. There's a difference. <laughs> Not really. Um, they'll, they'll cause diarrhea. I've actually been, I've actually been pooping. <laughs> okay, scary. TMI. It's called constipation. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he's fucking talking about shitting and laxative and all that other <laughs> shit. But when I say I've been pooping less, that's too much information. What the joking, fuck is wrong dude. with you, Jack? Yeah, I mean he has been talking about. He took. He spent the first five minutes of the show talking about his herpy hands. I mean we we we've, we've crossed the threshold of okay. pooping, so we're there. Uh, no, so when I talk about not pooping, that's too much information. <laughs> um, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong? But anyway, shovel night. <laughs> Go ahead, continue with your shovel knight. Yeah, or so shovel. shovel knight, it's a, uh, it's hard, very very hard. I, I I think I died like twelve times at the first level. Um, it, like I said, it's it's a very old school, you know, kind of cutthroat, uh, Super Nintendo game. Or you play like an original Nintendo where, you, know, you die one time and you lose everything. Well, actually, no, you don't lose everything. You lose oh. like you lose like I think like twenty five percent of your. You get like coins throughout the uh-huh. game or throughout the levels, and you buy upgrades and stuff. And um, basically, every time it's kind of like Dark Souls, where if you die, you lose like you lose a chunk of your uh, your your coins. Yeah. And but if you get back to the spot where you died at and you recover, you can recover them. But if you die again after that, you lose those those coins. It sounds like an element of like Dark Souls. So, along with wow, that. it's kind of like Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. Hedgehog. How so? You know where you run, you fucking uh, you lose all the coins. You run, you can pick them back up. But this- you run, you get hit. All you fucking get hit. You lose your coins. You have to fucking go back, pick them all up. Okay, okay. Yeah. Kind of sounds like kind like- it just sort of sounds like a mix between like say the the Dark Souls type of uh, aspect, like what Tyler was just saying, but uh, mixed in maybe with like a little bit of like Castlevania two in instance. Because when you die in that game, you lose all your hearts and you have to redo them again. <laughs> oh, okay. I never, I never was the Castlevania guy, but <laughs> no, I would say it's it's only it's fifteen bucks. It's on you can only get it on I think Steam and Wii yeah, U right now, which is kind of weird. Um, but no, I would say definitely. Uh, it name two consoles that name a console that gets uh, no game and a console that's great for the, those types of games. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I would say definitely uh, check it out right now. It's fifteen bucks. Uh, maybe watch some videos on it first, and if you're into, if you know, if you have like a nostalgia for those type of like old school games, um, definitely pick it up uh, for fifteen bucks. Well, but I'll I'll, I'll probably know, talk about more next okay. week, though. So hopefully. All right, okay. real quick before we move on, have you any of you seen the yes. movie uh, Mystery Men? Yes. It is the main character from Shovel Knight, uh, William H Macy, as the <laughs> shoveler. I I kind of wish now. <laughs> I wish, I wish Keenan was there too. Or I wish Kel, Kel was Kel there was too, there. along with Pee Wee. Kel, Kel was there. Oh, that'd been great. Ha <laughs> Someone stole my bike. That'd been great. Oh, the that last, really good. the last levels, like in the last levels in the basement of the oh Alamo. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, so you take a funny movie and you put it with like a oh. retard. Hey, you don't talk about Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure like that, okay? <laughs> It's the second greatest like, movie of all time besides Space Jam. <laughs> Space, come on and jam if you want to jam. I have the soundtrack right now. I know, so do I. Can, I, can I had the sound. I had the sound. I had the soundtrack when I was a fucking kid. I have I'm it, and I had bought it again. It's an awesome soundtrack. So everybody at home, if you want to listen to a good movie soundtrack, <laughs> listen to the Space Jam soundtrack. <laughs> Probably the greatest the movie scene. soundtrack of all time. It, it is. is actually a really it good soundtrack. It is a mixture of almost it's everything. Out. I still listen to it from time to time. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to sort of go into what I've been playing really quick, though. But before I do that, though, I just wanted to tell you guys about an idea that I've actually been doing for... Uh, I've been thinking about making a Pokemon theme for, like, one of my teams. And uh, 
knowing me and stuff and how big of a pro wrestling family fan I am, I'm trying to... I know, I'm trying to make yeah, a professional we saw that. wrestling we team sh- Pokemon we, team. We, sh- <laughs> <laughs> we saw that. Uh, we just... We <laughs> so, obviously, obviously, Pikachu is John no. Cena. Um, Mewtwo is CM Punk. That's... No, um, that's... Hmm... Yeah, that actually Why makes sense. Mew, I, I come to that. Mew is Undertaker. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Mew is Undertaker. No, I would go mute. No, I would go Mewtwo as Undertaker. Mew. You is know, back in the day Punk. when uh, I used to play on uh, Pokemon Stadium and stuff, and import my uh, red and blue information, I actually nicknamed uh, my under my uh, Mewtwo Undertaker. <laughs> and uh, the other Mewtwo on the other version of was named Kane. <laughs> Wait, if we're going, if we're going, we're going based on the TV show. Obviously, Charizard is CM Punk. Because he didn't like Red. He didn't like Ash. That's right. true. Right. There we go. So, I, I heard Charizard now is CM Punk. Mew is uh, Daniel what? Bryan. No. <laughs> you know, what, you know need, what's I, kind of interesting, though? <laughs> I would think about, like, Hollow. He's he's uh, Goldeen. Or not Goldeen. What, Magikarp. He, <laughs> Daniel Bryan is Magikarp. Daniel Bryan's Magikarp. He's unappreciated. <laughs> splash because <laughs> you see Daniel Bryan on the floor it's like okay try to do splash attack or something like that on Randy Orton just just wiggling up and down no alright no god what's his name oh Sky to Hardy that's magic oh, okay card. I can see that I I also see like that Pokemon <laughs> that uh, that luchador type of uh, bird and stuff like that Halucha for the recent X and Y games and stuff like that that could be like <laughs> possible Rey Mysterio right there <laughs> does he break does he uh, tear his ACL every time he does anything. <laughs> That's Kevin Nash, oh, I thought. <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, Rey Mysterio's like torn his. Rey Mysterio's fucking no for Dude. his fucking injuries. Yeah, like there's reasons why he just does that. Oh, fucking I know. It's, it's really it sad to a certain cold. degree. You can't do the West Coast because if you anymore. see his matches like in the old WCW, and then all of a sudden put like uh, see him like the recent years or something before he kept getting all these damn injuries. I mean, he is getting really old, and then his ligaments are tearing badly but uh anyway it's just a thought and idea i've been tossing around but uh what i've actually been playing is an old psp game which obviously i know is probably going to get under the skin of some people it's like oh why don't you play some i'm sorry there's kind of a there was kind of a lag no it's like there was kind of a lag there did you say psp i did PSV? say psp playstation portable <laughs> oh god and across the world the world side he said p but uh i've also been playing sort of like a 2d pl- i've Everyone actually been North kind Korea of like uh, playing a 2d platformer kind of like what ginger boy has but instead of shovel knight i decided to play Prinny. can i really be the hero <laughs> and so basically what this game ties into it ties into the the, the, the skaya franchise which is a well-known type not like well-known but it is a srpg like a strategy RPG from uh, Niz America. And uh, the whole concept around those is just kind of like a turn-based type of uh, strategy game, kind of in the veils of, say, Final Fantasy Tactics. But this is like an offshoot of that Disgaea series, so where you're actually controlling the the penguin type of demons and stuff like that that are called uh, Prinnies, which are apparently... They're human, like bad human like uh, souls or something like that, reincarnated into like uh, the netherworld and stuff like that. And... Uh, they are penguins that have wings. They explode if you toss them, and uh, <laughs> and pretty much they got to repent for their sins to the overlord. So that's pretty much their thing. Okay, now um, I was making fun of you at the very at the beginning, but that I know, right? Fun. <laughs> I was able to want to throw fucking evil penguins and. Hip, the thing about the twenties and stuff up. like that, I mean, they're kind of like lack, they're kind of lackadaisical to lackadaisical to a certain degree. It, I mean, the Disgaea series is really known for its humor, and uh, this guy, uh, I mean, Prenny, can I really be the hero? Is kind of takes that kind of like uh, that uh, hilariousness and stuff from the series, and just works his way into like a, a hard as balls kind of two D platformer, because the whole aspect of a two D platformer really is uh, the con- the element of control, the element of like uh, like trend like. Like, going through certain uh, levels and stuff without uh, being killed and stuff like that. The good part about this game, initially, is you're given, like, about pretty much 999 lives right off from the start. Because since printies, they die or something like that after, like, uh, three hits and stuff like that. But, uh... 
the thing about this this game is it 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 does get kind of hard in spots because certain like uh, there's just certain aspects of the controls that uh, prevent me from advancing further. With a, this type of platformer, it's not like Mario where it's like pristine or precise and stuff like that. When you jump up in the air straight without holding the control pad, I mean you can't uh, move the character in the in the air as fluidly. So what I'm doing basically is I'm missing jumps because I'm jumping and stuff, and I can't uh, jump unless I'm holding down the D-pad <laughs> in order to do that. <laughs> so here I am, like, mistiming jumps. Like, say, like a like a small platform, I gotta get up higher, right? And so I press the X button and then try to do the control pad to that direction right after, I'm not doing anything. So I gotta hold the control pad, make the jump, and here I am missing jumps because I can think I can hold the control back back and just flow back to that uh, that platform, if, the, if I'm making any sense. But, uh, the thing about this game that I do like, I like the boss battles. I mean, quintessentially, you're collecting all these items to create this super dessert from one of, like, the netherworld, like, uh, like, one of the overlords, like, assistants or something called Edna. And so you're trying to make this super dessert with various ingredients, and you gotta go through, like, all these different, like, uh, worlds and stuff and, uh, get, uh, these specific, like, ingredients. So... I think one of the, f like, uh, there are, are, like, a few bosses that I did uh, have a chance to face. One of them was this fox lady, which, uh, you basically, it's like a standard, like, platform affair where you have to read her movements, but, uh, as soon as you get her down to, like, about a quarter of their health, she just speeds up and just tries to, uh, basically confuse you. If you're not on your toes, you're gonna get your ass handed to you. And then you have another boss battle where you had, like, you have to fight two people, out of, like, uh, two, uh, warriors at once. And and so what you gotta do is you gotta dodge their spell attacks and uh, dodge their sword attacks and stuff like that. I end up having to do redo this boss like over and over and over again. This was last week. <laughs> and so my first initial hour of playing this game was uh, I get past the first stage and the first boss pretty good. And the second stage I go to and I go to that boss battle, it took me like about 30 minutes or an hour just to learn that I had to uh, go through, try to eliminate this one this one warrior from using her projectile attacks and then having to go forth and get the other one. I mean, this game, like I said before, it is kind of hard, but it really makes me want to play it some more because it has that old school type of feel where, okay, try again, do this, do that. And I'm just fun, kind of really enjoying it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what all of I've been playing. So, Knuckles, what you've been playing? Well, last week I was talking about how I just yeah. started Dead Rising 3. I have dove a little bit more into that. I've killed a couple of psychos, which, oh my god, it's fucking retarded. And when you're play yeah, which, if you're, if you're familiar with the Dead Rising franchise, there are these human enemies that are just fucking go crazy in the ap zombie apocalypse. Or in the yeah. zombie outbreak. Since in every fucking game <laughs> it's a new fucking outbreak. Um, well, right. in Dead Rising 3, there's connect function functionality where you can right. just yell at people. And one of the guys, the first like mm -hmm. main boss guy, he, he's just driving a fucking motorcycle <laughs> that shoots fire out. Uh, has a giant flamethrower. I was like, you have to dodge that shit, and then you have to yell, you're crazy! <laughs> you have to, you have to yell that into the connect. <laughs> if you, if you want to get that, if you want to get fucking him to stop and get enough mm -hmm. time to actually do something, yes, you, you pretty much have to. <laughs> it gives you, you do that, gives you time to actually go, uh, use a special on him, like a combo or something. What if you don't have the connect? Yeah, I'm kind of wondering that. If you don't have the connect? If you don't have the connect, it's not that big of a problem. Okay. You just can't use like the special okay. combos and stuff. Okay. And uh, you have to find a way, another way to beat him. Because if uh, if you have you're using your connect, you're basically he stops his vehicle and he's like he just gets really <laughs> frustrated before he starts okay. to go back and attack. Then you, just, um, but since you can't really do that, you have to wait for him to stop. Yeah, I'm own. just wondering about. That since I don't own a connect and, and stuff, but I haven't got around to play Dead Rising Three. If uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if I don't have the connect and stuff, if, am I gonna really be able to beat this game? 
right. you, you're going to be able to beat the game. It's going it's probably going to be a little okay. bit more challenging for you. But another thing that's really challenging is playing this game at 2 a.m. and having to yell, You're crazy! You're crazy! <laughs> I can see the neighbors get on you for that. It's like, oh my god, there's a fight going out. Oh, no. Not 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 just your neighbors. Your people who ah, live inside your house. Morning. You're crazy! <laughs> also, yeah, that's, that's just uh, one of the bosses, though. There are other bosses in that game. For example, like this guy at a sex, okay. sex store. It's like, yeah, kinky. You have to fucking yell that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> for him to go. It's two in the morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> All of a sudden, you go for the kinky. boss. Like, you're crazy. Yeah, it's like, like what the fuck? Like, you're kinky. <laughs> no, it's just kinky. No, and then Knuckles kinky. has to have an awkward conversation and... with his parents about how he, he his credit card information got stolen. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, I was I was playing with the <laughs> after the fight of the guy with the Harley or on that fucking motorcycle. I uh, ran up in this dojo, and it's like some Jackie Chan like cr- crouching tiger shit. Where I had to fight this uh, Asian janitor that has this fucking dojo <laughs> clothes on, and he's like doing like. Crouching tiger stuff with those smoke bombs and jumps on pillars. And he's like, "You're you have to yell, you're insane!" Uh, to, like to get him to stop so you could hit, throw something at him to get him to fall <laughs> off the pillars. And it's just fucking it retarded. Kind of <laughs> and you no, know, no, it's fun, but it's also retarded, like in a com- oh, yeah. comedic stance. Um, but. Kind of like what Ginger Boy was saying, Wolfenstein. It's like it's supposed to be serious, but it's not. It's really not. It's to the point where it's serious and it's just yeah. making fun of itself. So satire, like it. Yeah, it's a satire. No, kind of like. Uh, oh, good. Cabin in the Woods. At least it's like a satire, not like super serious, like that E3 trailer was. Oh no! I, I, I yeah, I, I'm. I mean, I've okay. talked about that last week. How it's how it's funny. Um, they the save points. If you do want to play on like the heart nightmare mode that has that deadline, you have to yeah. complete the game in. The save points are are your are bathroom stalls like oh, okay. porta potties. That, that kind of borrows like a, so like Dead Rising one and two. What's no in Dead Rising one, you had to actually go find a restroom. And this one, restrooms are pretty much all over the oh, place because okay. there's like a ton of construction mm. sites, and it's, like I say, even on nightmare mode, well, it's not, not that like stressful. No more okay. and so stuff. there's not like there's two bathrooms and like in I the said, or... <laughs> no, it's uh, it's like one bathroom, like every well, two or know. three blocks instead of two bathrooms in an entire video game. Or like, like, right. like for instance, yeah. say like No More Heroes or something like that, where you basically had to uh, save at your house and stuff by uh, sitting on your uh, freaking house toilet. <laughs> Which uh, I'm not. I'm not joking. <laughs> That's actually wow. what you do inside No More Heroes to save if you're not at a save point during the mission. <laughs> wow. Well, there is a. If you're not playing in Nightmare Mode for Dead Rising 3, you can save it you can just by pressing start and then go into the hit save game. That's good. Uh, which is which is great, yeah. Which, of course, can suck if you save in front of a giant <laughs> fucking yeah, board. No like, if you save pretty much any... If you save anywhere besides on top of a vehicle or, uh, like, in yeah. a safe house, prepare to, when you come back, prepare oh, to be really? fucked. Oh, good. Because the horde, the horde is going to be there when you come back. <laughs> oh, that sounds really reassuring. <laughs> but, like, the thing about Dead Rising 3, though, is, like, you start off with, like, you can... The game starts off, you go through, like, this highway and go find a couple people. Well, there's this plan, something yeah. called the Grim Reaper, which you take a katana and a, like, a grass-cutting scythe. To get make them together, it's called make it the Green Reaper, and uh, you don't have to actually go find a workbench to customize stuff. You just have to have the items in your inventory, Yay. and you just hit A, and it, it builds it on its own. But that weapon is probably one of the best weapons in the game. You nice. get it right at the beginning. 
Yeah, and it's the fa- it's fa- fast and it's a crowd control. <laughs> but one of my also my favorite weapons is uh you have okay. to have a wheelchair. No, it's like you have to have a teddy bear and a blowhorn. Okay. <laughs> and after that, you put the teddy bear and the blowhorn in a uh, wheelchair. Fucking, <laughs> all right, which attracts oh, the decoy. horde. I see. If, le- yeah, yeah, it attracts the horde. But later on, you can get a uh, make that teddy bear with a blowhorn have dual M sixteen <laughs> machine guns. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Freedom Bear. That's good. And you just throw it and go walk away. Come back, you just hear machine guns going off. You probably get scared. And then you just see like the horde going to the fucking teddy bear. It's like, oh yeah, I left that there. <laughs> and it's fucking great. Oh, more and more that game sounds pretty damn awesome. <laughs> De- Dead Rising 3 is fucking fun. And it definitely takes out the... There's no- it's more fun than the other two since there's no real challenge mm. to it anymore. Lots. But, be- yeah, I would recommend be careful when you get injured because you do die fast. Mm. Okay. But if you keep the weapons, like the Green Reaper and stuff on you, you'll be safe because it's just crowd control, crowd control, crowd right. control, death, death, death. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing. It's like, I kind of want to go back to the game <laughs> Oh, now, I don't blame you. So. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get into our rapid, like, uh... So, I'm going to go ahead and start with the obvious one in the top here. The new Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods. <laughs> the... Dragon, dragon, rock the dragon, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z! If, uh, for any of you who don't know, there is a new mm. Dragon Ball Z movie coming to select theaters, like, in the early part of August. And, uh, the... And it's going to be in a theater to me. That's awesome. Yeah. But uh, the Happy. biggest thing about yeah. this, it's one of the first, like, uh, the one of the first, like, uh, things that Akira Toriyama is getting back to for his Dragon Ball Z, like, uh, stuff in, like, years. Oh, oh, this, this movie has been out in, uh, like, has been out in the theater since the mid-90s. Oh, I know, I know. But, uh... And, uh, it's the first Dragon Ball Z movie to hit theaters in the united states i know that's what's so big about it too <laughs> yeah and oh, i can't wait for this movie you want to go in a little bit about yeah, it yeah apparently like f even though most people probably know what this movie's about but uh anyway this takes place like right after uh, the defeat of majin buu back in the dragon ball z like uh the tv show after that wrapped up obviously peace was uh, going forth and stuff like that but uh apparently this uh, new enemy has uh, learned about a certain, like, individual who actually got a chance to defeat Frieza. And so he's searching the universe trying to find Goku, who, uh, you know, he finally eventually comes to planet Earth. And so basically it's a battle between him and Goku and stuff like that. And apparently Goku is going to ascend into, like, uh... (laughs) I know, I could just hear Tyler sighing at the moment. But uh, he ascends to, like, a Saiyan god, pretty much. Which, you know... I'm not going to be sure what exactly this is going to be all about, though, but it has me excited. It's Super, it's Super Saiyan, it's Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, which has the very long fucking hair. And it hair. looks like uh, the coloring of K.O. Super Ken. Saiyan 4, <laughs> yeah, Super Saiyan 4 has the K- basically the K.O. Ken, but his hair is black, I yeah. think. Or, and his body's red, he has red fur all over. Huh. And now with the Super Saiyan God, he, he basically looks like... Regular Goku, red hair, red eyes, red aura. Well, I don't even think that uh, the Super Saiyan Four thing is even actually like uh, present or something like that. Since I, oh yeah, he didn't reach out in GT until yeah GT. GT. I mean, GT wasn't even like affiliated with Akira Toriyama. It was like something separate. But uh, I am just really excited about this. For one, it's actually by Akira Toriyama and doesn't have to go into the Dragon Ball like GT type of elements and stuff which honestly i i absolutely hated it hey i liked i liked i i, I liked gt all right gt wasn't it was bad. Good in a few spots like the, the quote the quote lost episodes that shit was fucking terrible yeah i, I kind of agree with you because it didn't really settle things but, with uh, general rildo and everything else like that but but everything else was fucking awesome like battle between the dragons when the when the Dragon Balls cracked and yeah. like 
that the dragon came back or the Omega Shinron yeah. and Shin Shinron and all the other that the, those fights were okay. awesome or most the Nova and all that all those fights were awesome. No, I just uh, battle between the Super Hell Fighter Seventeen. Yeah, that was pretty good. Where we saw Eighteen and Goku team up against two Seventeens, and then you see Krillin die for the final time. <laughs> Dude, that, dude, that, dude, that part where Krillin dies saving uh, his daughter and yep. uh, his 18, that shit was probably the best way for Krillin to die. Yeah. And you just see 18 go fucking crazy. Oh, man. Um, I almost completely forgot about that, too. Oof. Yeah, and then you see... Yeah, that shit was... That, that fight is awesome. Hero's legacy and the stuff before Baby can be tossed away... I kind of agree with that. Too. Uh, I didn't really like the the baby aspect to a certain degree as well, but I, I liked the uh, baby on Earth. I liked the baby on Earth part where, like, he's taken over Gohan, and he takes over Goten, right. and then you find out he takes over Vegeta, and then Vegeta and Go- Goku have this huge fucking battle. You see Goku turn Super Saiyan mm. four, then you see uh, fucking baby Vegeta take go go Orange Eight. <laughs> Yeah, using the blood waves and all uh, that shit. But. He, yeah, he, you see, no, you see, baby Vegeta goes to the fucking uh, goes to the eight form or golden eight uh, form, and he just goes fucking berserk, and he's like, and you he find out that he was purposely killing all his people, and that shit was intense. Yeah. And then there was some comedic stuff when uh, Elder Kai was trying to pull out fucking Goku. Goku's tail, mm-hmm. and I, I I enjoy GT for the most part. Yes, there are a lot of episodes that can be just tossed out as filler, right? But yeah, for the most part, I thought it was entertaining. Okay, well, anyway, let's go on to another topic right here. GameStop is smarter than Blockbuster. So apparently, what's this all about? I oh, come on, see, I put that top, I made that title with something I knew you wouldn't need it. <laughs> All right, well, the whole point of this uh, t- topic is basically saying how GameStop is making more better moves than Blockbuster did. Because okay. uh, there's, last year, uh, GameStop's made over $725 million on digital co- for digital content, yep. which everyone was expecting once everything went digital. Right. Or once a lot of things went digital, it would hurt GameStop. Right. But GameStop has been progressive where, like, they're, they're selling the PlayStation and Xbox cards, the Steam cards, all the uh-huh. other stuff. And it uh, talks about how people who, most or most parents, I guess, who uh, don't have a credit card, yeah. or kids who don't have a credit card, um, go into GameStop to buy the cards right. so they can go home and purchase the digital content. Right. And I'm, I made that Blockbuster joke saying how... Because Blockbuster was stupid and didn't want to fucking progress, their, de- progress the media. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Ginger Boy, wake up. Uh, got oh, five more minutes. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Come on. Oh, man. What? No, um... <laughs> oh, I think it's actually... I'm not surprised to hear about this. I, I'm surprised to hear about the number. They're saying, like, I think close to 70%. Uh, like digital sales, like are, are like the car, like is is from GameStop. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm, it was surprised me to hear that number. But I'm not surprised in the sense that I buy a lot of cards from like GameStop. That's because I trade. You know, I, that's before I trade a lot of games in. Yeah, so, you but, trade games in, and then you buy the cards. Yeah, and I mean that's a great way to get people to buy the cards as well. And then you can buy season passes through them as well, yeah. and the, the pre order bonuses you can you know and things of that nature. And then like you go, you can look and like sometimes like. You can actually buy the game. It's like you can't. You could buy the code for a game specifically. Like you can go to GameStop.com right now and buy like the game digital code for it. Like you can on Amazon. Yeah. Or yeah. Like I mean, I've gone to like Game GameStop and I've seen like they had like Wii U Virtual Console games. For, I know, uh, right? You know, you can buy the codes for them there. That's so kind of I, crazy. I, I think it's great because I'm one of the few people. I think. I mean, I'm one of the minority that wants GameStop to be around for a while. I think they're good yep. for I, I think they're good for the business. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I this is great to hear because I hope that means. I mean, I I don't think it's 
Um, I mean, dig- going all digital is you know going ahead more towards the digital is not good for GameStop. You know, I mean, five ten years from now, it's going to be more digital than it is now. But I, they're they're at least getting a, uh, a head start on this. They're going to jump on this. They're not. Yeah, they're GameStop's doing great trying to get the money now so yeah. they can be safe longer. Yeah, they're being proactive. They're being proactive, not reactive. Yeah. Right, which is what Blockbuster did and uh, didn't do so well since... Uh, Pretty much all video games st- or re- rental stores have went that route, though. Like, they didn't... They weren't re- react or they weren't proactive with the changing of the times and yep. they gone away. Right, and now you can't go to... You can't get a seven-day rental. Nope. You can't do any of that more. You have to go the 24-hour rental or the... keep. Keep the entire keep the movie eight months and don't watch it once and return it and you spend like eighty something dollars on a oh movie. god that sounds like, yeah, like my entire <laughs> yeah like well that was what I did with uh, Netflix when I had the fucking brick and mortar dip movies yeah I haven't had that in years no but I mean like I was talking about like I, no, I haven't either I'm just saying that's what happened when I did have yeah I was the same way but no like I've talked about before those like I mean I live in the the capital city of Iowa and. We there's over, I think there's like three hundred thousand people in our town, and we got I think two movie stores in it. Yep. Holy shit! Like, that I I can think of. There might be smaller. But ones. you have like nine thousand red boxes. Yeah, there's like there's like twelve red boxes within like a square mile of me right now. But I mean, they're not always up to That's date with them either. Can... So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sounds like where like I live red too. Boxes, I mean, my main movie rental store that I've been going to for years and stuff finally closed down like around two thousand eleven or two thousand twelve. After like being there for like years, <laughs> and basically there's just nothing left but just like red boxes, like one in a Walmart and two like right by where like a Walgreens is at. <laughs> yeah, Walmart, Walgreens, and maybe a McDonald's. Maybe a McDonald's. yeah, and then like you can't even rent PS4 and Xbox One games there yet. No, so. you, you pretty much have to rent like either like Wii or some some of those games or like PS3, Wii 360, or PS3. yeah, we see some Wii U stuff shit. in there every now and again. But yeah, we I think you can get like Mario Party for the Wii. Uh, but yeah, yeah. See, for me, it's like my rental experiences was when I was in high school mm-hmm. and didn't have a lot of money, so I just rented video Same games. Yep. Um, Did that with the GameCube. That's era. where, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Or my my was three sixty. So man, you were lucky. <laughs> but uh, oh, see, yeah, I live at when around two thousand seven when I got three sixty, which is also the same point as when my parents got divorced and I was. I hate to say this, fortunate enough to where I get picked up, got picked up. I drove by two, we drove by two blockbusters on the way to and from mm-hmm. school. Nice. So that made it a little right. easier for me to rent games there. And also the games, the blockbuster we had or was kind of out of date. So they kept, they still had those uh, one month Xbox Live cards after <laughs> five months of being discontinued. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, and but yeah, it's after that, after I graduated and got a job, it's like don't after then blockbuster went out of business. It's like you either have GameFly or you had to buy sixty dollars per game. Yep. Oh. And GameFly, GameFly at the time, you just, you have you had to basically cheat it like I did, where you had to put one game in your system and hope they send it to you that week. Oh. They still have issues with that to this day. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but. uh yeah, and it's ridiculous now. And if GameStop opened up like a side business where you can rent games from them, bam, more money for them. Yep. Well, you know what, guys? Let's go ahead and just uh, wrap it up right there for this week's podcast since we are running over an hour. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into my wrestler of the week, which honestly this week is uh, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. It's going to be on a wrestler that I have done before, that I remember I, I've done before. And it ties into WWE 2K15. <laughs> God damn it, Sting. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that's the wrestler of the week for like another week or so, like the second week. <laughs> Sting is our wrestler of the week. He is going to be a pre-order bonus for WWE 2K15, which I'm glad. It's not just one version. No, it's two versions. It's No, it's three. No, it's not the three. Yeah, I heard it was three different types. I heard it was two based upon the IGN's article. That could be wrong, but from what I understand, oh. it's going to be 
the WCW TNA Sting. Yes. Oh, no. I want the Joker. I want the Joker Sting from TNA, from like 2012. You could probably do that quickly inside like a creative character like type of altering things. You can do that now, 2014. Yeah, you can actually. <laughs> but uh, you get old like uh, 80s, like 90s, like uh, Sting before he actually turned into the Crow. So you have the man called Sting. And uh, you get the Crow Sting that feuded with the with the NWO and all the other like uh, bad guys back in the mid '90s, which I feel is the best version of Sting. But yep. yeah, obviously, you know, as long as Sting does not wrestle inside the WWE, I I just don't really care if he does. Like, uh, if he shows up for like for like as a legend or something like that for a WrestleMania Hall of Fame induction or something like that, I'm okay with that. But uh, just just keep him clear from the wrestling ring. I think it's in his best interest and stuff like that. Just to uh, just not even That's, wrestle a match. You, what would you think if he 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 came back without the mask or without the paint and stuff and was an announcer? What would you think I about think that, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, I'm open more so for him being like a manager or like even like uh, even like a freaking like announcer or something. Oh, so no, if he's a manager, he's. There's more likely for him to get in the ring and wrestle. Oh, you got a point there too. He could, he could still bump. I mean, he could do that part if they need him to. Yeah. No, I think I'd like to see him have at least one match. I don't know. Two at the most. I don't know. Have I, you I, seen his last he, match that he had? I mean, I'm not. I know. I know. He's he's past his prime for sure. I mean, but I'd like to see him at least one time in the WWE ring. For you know, just just once. I know. Hey, anyone seen that terrible fucking uh, WCW movie? Ready to Rumble. Rumble? That movie's awesome, Rumble, by the yeah. way. It's just, terrible. Oh, God, with David Arquette? It's, it, yeah, it's This movie's it's great. Terribly. I love that movie. God. That movie's terribly it's awesome. awesome. I love it. Dude, all I remember about that movie is it tied yeah, it's in. Like, are you Dude, sure you all want All I remember it? about Ready to Rumble is it tied into the WCW with David Arquette winning that world title, and I really want to keep that as clear from my memory as possible. <laughs> It was like, he was like, are you sure you want to be able to do this? Yeah, everyone knows wrestling fake. <laughs> Bow, punch in the face. He's like, did that feel fake for you? <laughs> That's a great movie. It was like, Am I, I wish that movie was on Netflix right it now. Used, it was on there for years. But uh, oh, here's something I will say. For anybody that's listening to this podcast, like, uh, well, hell, on iTunes, on where... All 40 of you. But uh, there are some great matches that Sting has had, would say, like, with Ric Flair, with... Uh, even some, well, I'm not saying some like like Starcade '97. I mean that match with Hogan was kind of awful, but uh... yeah, <laughs> that was more Hogan. That was more Hogan. That was more Hulk Hogan than anything else. I agree with you there. But uh, Sting has had some great matches in the WCW. I would just suggest maybe just going on to YouTube, just uh, looking up the matches in there. He's he's had some good promo work too in TNA. I will admit. But, or uh, if you have the network, you can watch all of WCW pay per views on there as well. Yeah, you can do that as well. Which, if you if you want the info, I'll send you uh, Ginger Boys info. <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> Which can we speak? Can we talk a little bit though? The WWE, the WWE like network and stuff like that. How much they've been plugging it on their actual like uh, like Raw and stuff. Yeah, I kid you not, dude. They need, to, dude. Why not? No. It's like I understand shit. that, but they plugged it like about seventeen times during. Um, dude, they're Raw. in they're in desperation mode right now. I that know. thing is not going too well for them. I can understand. I can't really blame them. I, you, you, you think it'd be fucking great for them? Though. <laughs> Obviously not, because people they are having. To I guess do it we're much. in the minority, and like I guess we're. I guess since most uh, wrestling fans are, I'm gonna insult y'all both. I'm okay. sorry. Uh. Kinda iffy. Well, what iffy for and, some things, or and little kids. Well, it's iffy on some and, things, really. I mean, certain wrestling fans no, are really, really. Extreme. No, it's like they're or most of them are little kids that don't have access to a credit mm-hmm. card, and then there are some of them that are just a little bit out of there. Well, well I mean, the, it is kind of weird the fact that they're they're pushing this as a family. Yeah, it's a PG show for families, but then they also want you to get this network. Which actually so. <laughs> holds a lot of the, the freaking ECW pay per views, which are by no all means. The, yeah, well, no, I mean from the standpoint they they go after the they go after the kids, but then they want you to pay money for this when their people they're going after are the kids that don't have any actual money or credit card. Yeah, right. That's true. But anyway, that's the wrestler of the week here, Sting. If it was more, if it was more attitude era, more, maybe even ruthless aggression era. 
dude. Like, I rather would have like we, the full episodes of ECW and Nitro on there. Don't. No, I don't want to watch. Most of those Nitros are awful. Um, actually, a lot of the the Nitros before the oh, end come of on, the, the great cruiser, matches, the on cruiserweight it. stuff. With <laughs> okay, the I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Between... I'm gonna win this argument. Viagra on a pole okay. match. I win. What? That was a real match. That happened. Oh my god! David Arquette won but, the world title on on Nitro. Yeah, okay? I know he did. All right. Now I'm gonna give you another match. Fatal Four Way. Cruiserweight title. Jer, I mean, not Jer- yeah, Jericho, mm-hmm. Mysterio, yep. Hooven to yep. Guerrera, and Eddie. That Guerrero. was a fantastic I'm sorry. match. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, man, but fire ground a pool match, man. That that does it for me, dude. <laughs> Rap is crap. <laughs> I, you know, what? Right, yeah. I'm going into the Twitter follow of the week. Yeah, let's so go ahead to the guesses. random Twitter follower of the week. <laughs> and, you know, I'm I'm feeling excited. I can't wait to see my destiny in the near future. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. At David Arquette. It knows it's his destiny. No. <laughs> no. I'm going since tomorrow, or as we're recording... An hour from now, we get the Destiny beta for the PS4 yes. users. I'm going to go and do some douchebag thing. I'm going to go tweet at Bungie. <laughs> follow him. Follow the, one of the best video game developers in the world. Okay. Top 20. Top 10. Okay, Top well, 18. I guess with that... In... <laughs> at Bungie. B-U-N-G-I-E. All right, well, I guess with that in mind and stuff, check out our Facebook page, Drunk-Nerds, and also check out us on Twitter, Drunk underscore Nerds. So, for episode 56, I have been your host, the Jack of Hearts. I was Ginger Boy. And I've been the cause of the zombie apocalypse. (laughs) Good night, everybody. Later. to me beers there anyways we're on itunes now so go on there check us out and if you like us leave us a review and we'll even shout you out and jack will send you his credit card number <laughs>